Folks, Eileen Cannon has made a quick move as to judge on a ruling, which is a delay, uh, which is what Trump's attorneys have asked for. And I'm talking about this Mar-a-Lago documents case. There was a couple pieces of information that Jack Smith was uh, demanding uh, from uh, Trump's team. And uh, Judge Eileen Cannon, after the Supreme Court ruling, hearing what Judge Clarence Thomas said about Jack Smith's authority, basically he has no authority at this point, uh, is what Clarence Thomas is in the belief of, considering he was uh, basically brought off the streets to become a federal prosecutor, recruited by the DOJ to go after Trump on federal charges in local jurisdictions. Uh, this is just, there's nothing uh, constitutional about this. Um, this actually had to be voted on, like with a special counsel through Congress, uh, to set up a investigation on Trump, basically, as the way I understand it from what Clarence Thomas said. But um, the left is crying that once again, the Supreme Court is ruling for the Constitution, ruling for Trump, ruling against these tyrants in this bullshit way, bullshit way of um, handling our president. Now, this delay doesn't <clears throat> squash the case, but it does inevitably say that this case ain't going nowhere. Um, I think Trump will have the last laugh on this. Hopefully every one of these cases that Jack Smith's hands touch will be thrown out on the fact that he doesn't have jurisdictional uh, authority is what um, Supreme Court justices are claiming. And they stated that during the entire Supreme Court uh, immunity uh, ruling on Trump several times in their transcripts. But let's go ahead and get into this. I've got uh, breaking news from you. Salty Tears from MSNBC. They hate it. They hate it. I've got a clip about George Stephanopoulos asking Biden about his crowds. And Biden is straight up lies and Stephanopoulos fact checks him in real time. I've got another great Dan Scavino clip for y'all. Another inspirational Trump clip. And I've got a little bit more breaking news. So stick around, folks. Here we go. I'm going to agree with you, Donald Trump, and temporarily stay some important deadlines. Your thoughts? You know, Katie, so much to dislike, both in form and in substance, about this one. And I think what I want to start with is just two short lines from the motion that Donald Trump's lawyer filed yesterday. Yesterday. So we'll talk mm. about just how quickly Judge Cannon acted when her action was going to be to the benefit of Donald Trump. Here's what they say in the opening paragraphs of yesterday's court filing. Quote, President Biden's exceedingly weak debate performance on June 27. <laughs> quote, President Biden's failing attempt to communicate with the voters. Close quote. Katie, I, I was a federal prosecutor for 30 years. I've never seen language like that in a court filing from a defense attorney or a prosecutor. And any self-respecting judge would consider ordering it stricken from the motion <laughs> and then issuing a show cause order, directing the attorney who authored it to show cause why they shouldn't be sanctioned for turning a court filing into a campaign ad. That's the. While he's complaining about the way the Republicans are, the way uh, Trump's attorneys worded this motion to delay, the judge delayed it anyway. And the way this order explains, it explains that Judge Thomas, among other judges, are in belief that there is no cost, there is no authority for Jack Smith to be prosecuting Trump. He didn't have it. He didn't go to special counsel. He wasn't uh, voted, uh, voted. This wasn't voted on by a special counsel in order to start uh, an investigation. None of this stuff is supposed to happen. Procedure, you know, thing called procedure didn't happen. That's what they went to him with. That was the standing ground that made this go this way, I'm sure. Um, but it, I don't believe Judge, uh, Judge Cannon is on Trump's team, but I believe she's on the right side of justice. She's on the side of the Constitution. And every time they try to uh, step on Trump's constitutional rights or push for things that are just uh, not fair, Judge Cannon seems to step in and uh, call balls and strikes. And I like her for that alone. Now let's get back into this. We'll listen to a couple more minutes of their salty tears. Let them break down how somehow it's Judge Thomas's fault. Like I said, Judge Thomas's uh, words in his transcripts probably had a lot to do with her ruling today or yesterday. No doubt about it. First observation. The second is think back to May 
when Jack Smith, special counsel, filed a motion asking Judge Cannon to modify Donald Trump's conditions of release to stop him from saying and posting things that were endangering law enforcement. She has yet to act on that. And yet within 24 hours of Donald Trump's attorneys asking her to do something, she couldn't jump on it quickly enough and entered an <laughs> order, basically taking a train that was already stopped dead in its tracks and, and you know, ter- sh- uh, putting it in reverse. So she's moving <laughs> away from a trial date rather than toward a trial date. I was envisioning, Glenn, her putting like a boot on the wheels of that train. Ian, I want to talk to you and stay stay on Judge Cannon, but in in a peripheral way, kind of. Um, That concurrence from Justice Thomas in the immunity decision, it's been something that I've been harping on for days because a lot of people haven't been talking about it. Justice Thomas has this random concurrence in that opinion wherein he criticizes the validity of the appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. Now, mind you, we were just in court on that two weeks ago, not even, for Trump's motion to dismiss because of the, quote, invalid appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. Your thought about the success of them now filing as supplemental authority, that Supreme Court decision in support of their dismissal of this entire case because of Jack Smith being appointed special counsel? Yeah. So when Judge Cannon was assigned to the case, I just wrote off the possibility of Trump being convicted for the stolen documents altogether. Mm -hmm. She has behaved throughout this process as if she was a member of Trump's defense team. I think what's worrisome about the Supreme Court's immunity case and what... I want to stop him right there. He didn't say alleged. He didn't say possible. He didn't say I think. He said stolen documents. Trump's stolen documents. Does this guy have any uh, court ruling proof that Trump stole anything at this point? Or is he just shooting his mouth off? You know, that's defamation right there. You know, I'm not allowed to say somebody stole something unless I know they stole it. Uh, That's actually defamation. Uh, This guy needs to be careful. What's worrisome about Thomas's even more radical concurrence in that case is it suggests that Maybe the justices aren't that different from Eileen Cannon. They're just better at picking their spots instead of haphazardly doing everything they can do to possibly benefit Donald Trump. They just sneak in where it really matters and give him immunity or in Thomas's case, claim that the whole prosecution, the whole special prosecutor is on is unconstitutional. It is worrisome. I I mean, we are going into, you know, a very difficult election. If Trump wins, we could be going into a very difficult presidency. And the courts from Eileen Cannon all the way up to the big house and the Supreme Court seem to be signaling that they have no interest in reigning in Donald Trump. You know, Glenn, Trump also alleging in his motion for stay relief, et cetera, that the DOJ is violating its own unwritten 60 day rule wherein the DOJ avoids the appearance of election interference in the run up to an election. But how is that even applicable here? I mean, you you talk about, you know, inappropriate language. I I can explain it to you without this guy having to lie. This is election interference. This is breaking the rules. Uh, This is absolutely uh, election interference by normal standards of being able to go after somebody that is not just in the presidential race, but the front runner contender and going to be the winner of the race. Uh, they need to back off. And if they don't, it'll be like this. All of these cases will be just like this one here, falling apart while the mainstream media scrambles to figure out what the hell they're going to do about it. <clears throat> now, I've got several more clips for you. This next one is a little bit heartbreaking, uh, but I want to show you how Biden really feels about black people. We've all seen, heard his, his slanderous uh, conversation about if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. We've heard all his negative behavior. We have been through the mill with his friends, uh, Mr. Bird, uh, leader of the Klan, that he was holding hands with during a parade, went to his funeral, um, called, him, uh, called himself a brave civil rights uh, leader. But at the same time, for the most part, loves to get the black vote. But from the words coming out of his mouth, it comes off as a racist. Uh, and I say that being a white guy, I just I've heard so many things that Biden said. A lot of these elites have this disdain for everybody but their themselves. It may not even be about race. But this is a really disturbing video of, of a fan of Biden at a bike at a Biden rally 
<clears throat> now this is um looks like she's maybe a high school or college girl uh has her little logo on her shirt but she not only gets snubbed by one of the other uh biden supporters but then gets snubbed twice by biden it's really sad i'll stop it uh when you actually get to see her expression change kind of disheartening but what's what trump needs to do he needs to make a commercial about this video i'm talking about make a trump ad out of it find out who this girl is invite her and her family to a trump rally and invite her on stage let her know she's welcome to the family talking about this girl right here maybe you've seen this maybe you haven't this has kind of went viral and on twitter but truth be known it is nowhere on mainstream media mainstream media will not cover this uh let me move this up a little bit see this girl's face right here looks a little disheartened this lady right here one of these angry old karens trying to take her sign away from her let me just go ahead and get into it for you folks this is actually a little bit disturbing it says, in a scene too familiar, those who have witnessed the Democrats' so-called tolerance firsthand, an incident occurred at Biden's campaign event Friday night in Madison, Wisconsin. After delivering a speech to his supporters, Biden proceeded to shake hands and take selfies with several of his audience members. members. Among the crowd was a young black woman, excited and proudly holding a Biden-Harris sign. However, her moment of joy was rudely interrupted by an elderly Biden supporter who seemed vi visibly irritated. Act like she thought she was in the way. And not on top of that, Biden snubbed her twice. We'll go ahead and play this one first. Focus on the old lady to the... Focus on this old lady over here to the right. All right. Now you see, she's happy to see Biden. not the worst of it folks that's just one angle let me show you the rest of it this is really a little disheartening but this is how bad this girl gets snubbed bear with me real quick folks i'll blow this up for you now watch keep your eyes on the black girl and joe biden Can't play that one. Hold on. Let me turn the volume off. Can't have that copyright. Says I'm embarrassed for this black girl. Watch. Here he goes. Walked right past her. I bet if she was nine years old, he'd be sniffing her. Now he's talking to the angry old woman. Now he goes to go back by the other way. Watch, he's going to walk right by her. She looks up at him and smiles. Now she feels a little uncomfortable. And he starts talking to the Mexican woman in the back row. Now she just feels like she's in the way. See that? She's trying to get his attention. Mexican woman says, can you take a selfie with me? So here we go. Oh, decrepit Biden. Everybody's getting out of the way of the, pic of the picture. Folks, that is just a couple of angles of this. This is really, really sad and disheartening. I'm not even going to lie to you. But I just want to let, let this girl know uh, she's welcome. Come on over to the Trump party. We won't treat her like that at a rally.
That's just a fact, folks. Now, when Biden was on George Stephanopoulos the other day, if y'all seen that, uh, it was worth watching. He actually gave him some decent questions. First time I've ever seen Joe Biden uh, get asked real questions on ABC. But at any rate, uh, it was really a little informative. Uh, I put out a couple of shorts behind it. Uh, George Stephanopoulos and everybody that watches mainstream media, ABC News, saw it too, that Biden still doesn't have his crap together. And he had no real good answers for what happened to him the other day. Now, like I said, this here is a Biden rally, maybe a couple hundred people. But this is the funniest part of the whole thing about Biden rallies. Biden has asked, while on ABC, George Stephanopoulos, uh, about the crowd. Check What's your what plan said. to turn the campaign around? You saw it today. How many, how many people do you get draw crowds like I drew today? Do you find many more enthusiastic than today? Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. He can draw a big crowd, but what does he say? Who does he have? I'm the guy supposedly in trouble. Oh, I can draw a crowd like nobody else. Boy, that's the biggest lie that man has ever told right there. That's got to be the whopper of the century. Come on, folks. We know what's real. Now, I got one last clip here for you. A uh, little bit of an inspirational. And if you haven't ever went, come over to my Twitter page, come on over to my X page. It's called Devoted Patriots 2. Same name, same channel. But I do a lot of sharing memes and uh, videos and uh, clips over here, pieces of information, uh, including Dan Scavino. So if you're not a, if you're on X, Twitter, and you're not subscribed to my channel, why not? Now this here is another great Dan Scavino Jr. Uh, put together. He's actually one of Trump's uh, technical advisors on several on several things. He puts out the Trump ads and. Um, there's a lot of campaign stuff for Trump, but let's go ahead and get into it. This is good stuff. Someone once said that America is great because it is good. And that if America ceases to be good, it will no longer be great. It is the goodness in Americans that informs the greatness of America. I allegiance to the flag. The freedom to do what is right and good for yourself, your family. To reap the blessings of hard work. To accomplish dreams. To live securely. To help others. Not by force of government, but by goodness of heart, where rights are not granted by government or claimed by identities, but are unalienable as members of the human race. Today, America's greatness is challenged by those with extreme notions. Defunding law enforcement as lawlessness abounds. Hateful rhetoric telling you what to wear and when you can work, limiting free speech and freedom of worship. Old ideas of socialism repackaged in redefined words. Let us restore the values that made America great. We will make America strong again. Return to the higher standard. We will make America proud again. A land of freedom of speech, of worship. We will make America safe again. A land of security and prosperity. And we will make America great again. A land of greatness. I love it. I love it, folks. I do like Mr. Dan Scavino Jr. I go to his uh, Twitter page every couple of days uh, just to check out, see what he's got new over there. He is the best of the best at cranking out Trump ads and uh, inspirational videos involving what's going on with our country right now. If you don't know the guy, go check him out. He is definitely on Team Trump and Team America. That's all I got for y'all today, folks. Hope everybody enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and share.
And hello to all my new listeners, and thanks for showing up. Over and out, folks. Have a good one.